Yo, what's going on everyone? It's uh, Jack here at 360 Fitness and today I want to be pretty honest with you and pretty candid and I want to tell you four big ass fitness lies that I've told you guys over the years. Uh, so um, when it comes down to the, to the fitness industry, it's, it's all about research, it's all about homework and it's all about making sure that you have all the information available to you to make the best decision possible. Well, I've screwed up at least four times, uh, probably a lot more than that. Uh, about some some big things uh, over over my last uh, decade in the fitness industry, and um, to the best of my knowledge and to the best of my ability, I've told people to do certain things for the best best health and fitness results. Then, but now with more research, more studies, and just more experience in the industry, I've learned over the years and through our team of of over thirty awesome fitness professionals with you know thousands of client success stories. Uh, that yeah, those weren't those are just all bunk bullshit. <laughs> so it, it just didn't work. Uh, but we had all the information available to us then. We made a great um, you know decision to to approach it that way, and it was wrong in the end. So I wanted to tell you guys uh, the four biggest fitness lies that I've told you guys over the last decade, and um, and kind of give you alternatives to it. So let's get started. So uh, big lie number one. Um, this is about five six years ago uh, that I was really really on on. The, the bandwagon of saying that, you know, holy hell, there's a huge correlation to, to obesity epidemic and weight gain because of, of sugar intake. And a lot of those stats and studies that I was looking at were, you know, in 2010, in 2011, but they were from 2003 and 2005. And a lot of those studies were showing that sugar intake, you know, was just ramping up. Huge, 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 huge. And so I kind of made the, the dumbass correlation that just like a whole bunch of other people doing it and all those Netflix documentaries and crap that, you know, holy heck, you know, sugar must be the leading cause, if not, you know, one of the leading causes for the obesity epidemic in North America and for weight gain and whatever else. But now I'm looking at studies from 2013, 2015, showing that actually sugar intake overall in a North American diet is down or has plateaued. Uh, you know, we have sugar alternatives, we have sugar deriv derivatives, we have sugar alcohols, artificial sweeteners, you know, we can talk about all that stuff another day, but overall sugar, you know, dextrose uh, is, is actually plateaued or decreasing in North American diet. Um, so how the hell are people still gaining weight and why is there still an obesity epidemic and why are, you know, almost 40% of North Americans gonna be considered obese in the next 10 or 15 years? Holy heck, okay, so we can't blame sugar. Well, we're doing homework and doing studies and it's just really when it comes down to it, there's more calories in, less calories out. So we are considered more inactive than we've ever been before, and we're overeating more than ever before. Food is cheaper, food is easier to get. You know, fast food is, is, is super cheap compared to a freaking salad, um, but there's a whole bunch of different reasons, but sugar is not the main one, guys. Uh, it's just a, a, a flat fact of inactivity, you know, lower activity, and we're just eating too much, right? So, you know, we're our own worst enemy here, and we don't have uh, the big white devil to, to blame it on to. Uh, so we need to make sure that uh, that is getting up there. But sugar intake, uh, if you guys want to talk to me about that, let me know. Hit me up in the comments and we'll talk about it. Big ass slide number two, I've told you guys. Uh, digestion sucks at night, you know, so don't have heavy meals at night. Uh, that's kind of bunk and bullshit now, okay? So, uh, you know, a lot of times people would feel that, oh, you know what, if I eat at night, I'm going to gain weight. I'm, if I eat at night, I'm going to gain weight. If I have a heavy meal at night, you know, I can't burn off that energy, you know, so I'm going to store it as fat. That's bunk, okay? If you're, you're honestly, when it comes down to it, you're going to store body fat. Uh, if you have too much calories in and not enough calories out, just like we were talking about. Uh, so it all comes down to being in a calorie deficit. So if you had all of your calories, you know, an hour before you went to bed, let's say you're on a 2,000 calorie diet and you had 2,000 calories at 9 p.m. and went to bed at 10 p.m. Um, and you were in a weight loss deficit for you, you still lose weight, okay? So it's calories in versus calories out. Sure, you might, you know, have some weird dreams. You might have, uh, you know, some night sweats, whatever else but it's not gonna make you gain weight as long as you're in a calorie deficit uh, or in a calorie surplus you're either gonna or gain or lose. Um, when it comes down to it, I was underneath the fact you know, that you're gonna have poor digestion, you weren't gonna be able to absorb all those nutrients, you weren't gonna absorb all those vitamins, minerals, and there's just gonna be a lot of waste and your body is gonna have to work overtime. And a lot of it was because of gravity. So I was thinking, I was doing a homework in the studies about you know, if, if, we're, if we're prone or supine, if we're laying on our, our tummies or our bellies, uh, that you know digestion wouldn't be able to do its job because of gravity. Well, that's a, pretty bunk now. So a lot of studies are coming out and they're saying that you know gravity has little, if anything, to do with it. 
because it's you know our muscular structure uh, in our small intestine, our large intestine uh, that are doing most of the digestion. And it's really it doesn't matter if we were hanging upside down, um, our digestion would pretty much do 99% of its job uh, regardless. Uh, one cool thing that's kind of counter, uh, you know, kind of balances it off is that movement, you know, muscular contraction and expansion, movement, walking around, all that fun stuff does help with digestion, but it has nothing to do with gravity, like I was telling people uh, back in the day. So total bunk bullshit, don't listen to that. Uh, and then also uh, when I was talking to you guys about like five, six, seven years ago, I was talking about if you're eating late at night, you know, you're going to gain weight. That's crap. Uh, calorie deficit um, versus calorie surplus. You're on it. Big ass slide number three, I've been telling you guys over the last 10 years. Um, to be better at hockey or basketball or football or whatever sport of choice, you need a cross sport. More or less like uh, if you want to be better at football, go play hockey. If you want to be better at basketball, go play lacrosse. Eh, no, that's not, uh, there's not really any uh, studies or, or big tangible stuff that is, is supporting that argument anymore. Um, when it comes down to it, if you are an elite level player, if you want to get better at hockey, again, if you're an elite level player, uh, if you want to get better at hockey, play more freaking hockey, okay? Work on, on your weaknesses, leverage your strengths, you know, fine tune that, that small motor detail. It, that theory was from, you know, low level athletes or entry level athletes, they're just starting, is because they're gonna get better at that sport because of becoming better at athletics in general and becoming more active. So if they're playing hockey twice a week and they play football twice a week on top of that, well, they're twice as active. You know, they're, they're increasing their athletics, their speed, quickness, and agility twice as much. So that's kind of where those theories were coming from and where a lot of those stats and studies were coming from. But if we kind of take a look at the activity levels across the board and you want to get better at hockey and you only have four times a week, instead of splitting up in between hockey and football, just do hockey more. Work on those fine motor skills, work on those fine, uh, those little details and little skills you got to get better at. And the only thing that's really, you know, blatant across the board with studies are showing that if you want to get better at your sport is freaking weight training. Lift some weights, okay? Dumbbells, barbells, kettlebells, all that fun stuff. Resistance training is key. So if you want to consider that a sport, yeah, sure. Uh, but if you want to get better at hockey, play more hockey, lift weights. You want to get better at football, play more football, lift weights. You want to be a better soccer player, play more soccer, lift weights. You get the picture, okay? Uh, big ass slide number four, I've been telling you guys over the last decade. Uh, Muscle confusion is a good thing. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't really exist. Um, and that you know, big program changes are needed all the time. You know, so like, hey, let's change up your workout every six weeks or eight weeks or 12 weeks, you know, to confuse your muscles into making them adapt and making them do different things. There's not too much science behind that anymore. There's not too much studies behind it. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of, you know, muscle confusion info products in, in um, you know, late night infomercial crap that was out in, in the middle 2000s and, and around 2010. Talking about muscle confusion and how it's going to help your body burn fat more and, 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 and increase muscle mass. Well, you know, it's just resistance training in general. And a lot of clients, you know, at 360 Fitness and across, you know, the board make massive changes from small little tweaks and variables. So the foundational principles of working out and the foundational lifts, you know, squat, dead, bench, hip hinge, you know, overhead pressing, the main things that we work on here at 360 Fitness, those should never, ever go away. Right, you should never like get those movements out, just to confuse your muscles with some fancy new exercise uh, equipment or, or movement. Keep the foundations in, and and then start to screw and tweak with variables within those movements. So uh, we're talking, you know, changing up your sets, changing up your reps, changing up your tempo, changing up, uh, you know, the speed that you do those exercises in, changing up the frequency of your workouts. All that kind of stuff has way more impact on somebody's body transforming than just Oh, almost fell over here, um, than just uh, you know, confusing the muscles. Uh, and there's no new exercise that's gonna get you better results, guys. You know, there's, you know, there's not a cool little new dumbbell trick where we turn, turn our pinky and flex and wink at the same time that's gonna get your arms any bigger. You know, it's gonna be lifting heavier weights, it's gonna be changing up your tempo, changing your sets, changing your reps, confusing your muscles that way, but sticking with the freaking basics. Uh, and not just, you know, throwing new exercises in your program because they're new. Stick to the foundation. Okay, video cut out there, so we're back. Uh, but sticking to the foundations, um, you, you don't need to stray away from the fundamental movements um, to, to hop on, on new exercises and kind of new techniques and whatever else. You need to, to stick with the basics, making sure that you master those basics, master the fundamentals, get really freaking good at 
de uh, deadlift variations, squat variations, and bench de variations, you know, because that's what it all comes down to is those three main lifts and a couple other ones. Uh, you don't have to do these weird new things to challenge your muscles. Challenging your muscles by increasing your load, increasing your resistance, uh, changing tempo pace, all that fun stuff. That's way more important, guys. So focus on that. And a lot of our, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of like the most successful clients and the most successful, uh, you know, fitness people um, are the ones that have been doing the same, more or less the same programs for, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you know, with slight variations. You know, you see, you know, the, the fittest uh, bikini models and, you know, the largest bodybuilders and, you know, we're talking Olympic athletes and stuff like that. And they're like, you know, are you doing an exercise that I don't know about that are getting me amazing results? Nope. I'm just really freaking good at the basics. And I, I put them into all my programs and I know myself better because of it. And I just make some small changes. So don't get caught up in all the, the hoopla and the infomercial world and all this like secret exercises, to, you know, to get six pack abs in six minutes or whatever else crap like that. Focus on the fundamentals, focus on that. Um, so those are, you know, the, the four big ass lies that I've told you guys over the years. Uh, and the reason I wanted to shoot this video uh, for you guys and, you know, admit my defeats and admit my failures is because, you know, they're lessons. Um, you know, the one thing I love about 360 Fitness and, and kind of uh, what we've built here is with our 30 fitness professionals, we have 20 trainers, over 100 years experience. Uh, we're working with about 700, 750 clients between our three locations right now. But, you know, we've had thousands and thousands of client success stories. Um, the cool thing about the trainers is that they all work together, right? So 360 Fitness is kind of unique in that, in the fitness industry is that there's not Jack's Fitness and Dave's Fitness and Brooks Fitness all subcontracted and kind of working as a one-man show underneath that roof is that 360 Fitness coaches are all on the same page here, right? So uh, we're all employees and we all work together for the benefit of the clients. Uh, so that means we can put our heads together. That means we can challenge each other. That means we can do studies with each other. That means we can help each other. That means we can you know, learn from the other 20 amazing people in the room uh, to get our clients the best results. So, you know, we have professional development leads here. We have personal development leads here. You know, we have amazing trainer leaders that constantly challenge our team to be the best of their craft, but also to be out, like looking outside the box, you know, making sure that we're all up to date on our science, all up to date on our homework, you know, reading, learning, watching, you know, challenging our own methods, challenging, you know, the, the traditional methods and saying, hey, that's great and all, but how can I make it better? Or is there another alternative out there for my clients? You know, um, this is all about a knowledge game in fitness and health, and it's not, you know, how much you do, but how well you do it. And, and uh, that comes down to, you know, brain power and stuff. And I love that the trainers here at 360, you know, can do that and, uh, and they can constantly learn and evolve. Uh, so obviously there's gonna be things that I'm telling you this year that hopefully in 10 years, I can tell you that, you know, guys, that's not right anymore, or maybe that wasn't the best route. We're going this way now, constantly evolving, constantly adapting and moving in the right direction, uh, just like any other industry, right? Or else we'd be in horse and buggy uh, still. Uh, so I, I, I challenge you guys to, to make sure that, you know, in your own health and fitness journey, that you're not just getting comfy, that you're, you're constantly expanding your horizons, you're constantly trying new things, that, you know, you're, you're going against the grain, not to just go against the grain, but you know, to, to find new alternatives and to make sure that you're not doing something just because your friend down the street told you to. Do your own homework. We're doing the homework. Uh, we're doing the homework for our clients to, to make sure that they see the absolute best results possible. And I want you guys to do that for yourself. Uh, so if you, if you think that, you know, that's up your alley and you want a coach that's, you know, actually in it to win it and, and has you in mind, you know, uh, think of 360 Fitness next time uh, that you're starting a health and fitness journey. We'd absolutely love to have you for a free consultation. And like I said, hopefully I shoot another video here in a few years, uh, tell you some things that I told you uh, that are bunk now, uh, because that is my uh, dedication and due diligence to you guys to make sure that you have the best uh, results possible and the best information possible for your health and fitness goals. Um, but yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns about your fitness program, your nutrition program, or some weird little myth you've seen on bodybuilding.com or you know, on WebMD or whatever else, you know, let us know and then hit it in the comment section below and I'll do some homework for it and I'll see if we can debunk it together and we can make sure that you're on the right track. Uh, but signing off guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Catch you soon. Bye-bye.